Hey everyone, hi, Carl Gruber here, host of World Awakenings. Now in this episode, we check in on the amazing life story of Cat Wells. Her personal story is one of rising from the ashes of a young life filled with incredible highs and lows from trauma and abuse from an alcoholic father, the disappointments of financial and marital failures, and almost committing suicide, to earning degrees from two universities, becoming a fashion model, a life coach, a best-selling author, and becoming a millionaire and is now known as one of America's top mindset mentors. Now, if you're looking for some inspiration and faith to reach your mountaintop, this episode of World Awakenings is for you. Check it out. This is World Awakenings, the fast track to enlightenment with your host, Carl Gruber. World Awakenings is a podcast dedicated to opening your mind, your heart, and your eyes to the fact that the world's population is now, more than ever, awakening to all things spiritual, metaphysical, and enlightening, and just how they play an all-important role in our daily life. So join Carl on this enlightening experience as he interviews metaphysical and spiritual experts to discuss, debate, and delve deeply into the hows and whys of this worldwide awakening. When life isn't turning out the way you'd hoped, it's easy to think there's got to be something more. Turning your finances, relationships, career, and mental health around can be a struggle. But what if you could unlock your dream life in just 21 days? In this powerful and practical how-to book, there's got to be something more. Cat Wells shares her personal story of triumph and guides you through a transformative 21-day process to help you break free from whatever is holding you back from living your dreams. Drawing on the energy of the universe, she reveals how to align your intentions and manifest the desires of your heart. Get your copy of There's Got to Be Something More by Cat Wells today on Amazon, available as an ebook or paperback. Today on episode number 128 of World Awakenings, we dive right into our one-on-one -on -one chat with our featured guest, Kathy Wells, who otherwise goes by the name Cat. Her personal story is one of rising from the ashes of a young life filled with incredible highs and lows from drama and abuse from an alcoholic father to the disappointments of financial and marital failures and almost committing suicide to earning two degrees from two universities, becoming a fashion model, a life coach, a best-selling author, and a millionaire. She now is known as a mindset mentor. And here now with her incredible, amazing life story is our guest, Kat Wells. Welcome, Kat. Thank you, Carl. Oh my gosh, that sounded awesome. <laughs> well, you know what that means. That just means that you're awesome. So, and, okay, and you know, just to, to let uh, our viewers and listeners know, Kat and I both uh, graduated from Christy Whitman's um, Quantum Success uh, Coaching Academy. We both became certified Law of Attraction Life Coaches. <laughs> we were talking, oh, wow, 11 years ago. And, and uh, we've both followed our own life paths. And, and it's just such an honor to have uh, one of my fellow QSCA uh, uh, alumni with me here on the show. But let's dive into this cat i mean holy mackerel with everything life has thrown at you thus far congratulations on simply being here and rising from the dust and ashes holy mackerel yes it's been um a roller coaster ride for sure with lots of ups and downs and um but i tell you what i wouldn't change anything yeah yeah i think a lot of us when we look back when we get old enough to look at back at it but let, let's let's find out let's let the audience find a, a, out a little bit more um could you please go over um all that craziness in your earlier in life and how the heck you became such a loving caring and successful person that you are now well it's it's a, a it's a lot has happened in my lifetime so just a quick background I was raised in a military family. My father had already been to war and been a POW before I was born. So he had a lot of his own challenges. Um, and actually, I was the firstborn 
and I was not really wanted. My I found out later in life that my mom had thought about, you know, was going to divorce my father before I was before she found out I was pregnant. So I was really not wanted. But at that time, back in those days, the support wasn't there. So my mom decided to stay, which so my childhood was really rough with uh, very abusive situations. And, um, you know, deep down, I always knew there was a guidance guiding me. And yet, because of the way we're trained in society to believe that only to believe what you see, my family and my environment and of course the whole military culture because that's what I grew up in everything's black and white black and white right or wrong there wasn't any opening to be who I truly was Mm -hmm. and so I just kept it to myself and I let um, my guides guide me through all of these moments, not really being clear what that was all about. I felt the guidance, but I really didn't know if I was just crazy or if this is really happening. <laughs> but here I am, and now I'm a guide. So there you go. But um, so that was a rough start. And then, of course, um, you know, the marrying at 18 years old to someone just like my father, not knowing that that wasn't a healthy relationship. And then going through the ups and downs with that and and then losing, you know, remarrying and not understanding that the only thing that was creating my reality was my perspective. And that my in order to have what I wanted, I had to learn the hard way for my journey, but that's okay, that my perspective was what was creating the situations I was kept repeating. I didn't realize there was a pattern of belief, a pattern of thought, um, a pattern of pattern of not really loving myself because when your parents don't love you or you feel like you're not lovable, it's really hard to understand that you can love yourself. And that's all that really matters. Not when you're a child, when you're a child, it's just, you just feel like you've done something wrong, that you are wrong that something's wrong with you. And so I lived my entire first 30 years in that belief system until something shifted and took me on a totally different journey. And Mm -hmm. so the way that I love help, why I love helping people is because I've been on a lot of the journeys they're on. And I know what's on the, the rainbow on the other side of the journey, right? The wizard of the whole wizard of Oz story. And um, there's no place like home is the home within ourselves. Mm. You know, just for a moment, I, I would like to go back to uh, the earlier uh, chaos of your life. I know I, I read uh, in, briefly in your book, uh, there was at one point that you, you were had basically given up and you were in your car and you were intending to hit a tree with it and commit suicide. But you heard this voice that said, we're not done yet. Or what, what exactly was it? And you ended up... Uh, passing out or something. Yeah, it was really um, my first, you know, I said all along, I felt like I was guided, but there was nothing for me to really grasp whether that was, you know, if that was really happening or just my imagination. And in that moment of just, you know, having lost a child, my job, my home, my marriage, I was just, and then having no support anywhere, no one to go to, to help me, I was just done. And And so when that happened, there was like this downpouring of energy into my physical body. Effervescent, I don't know really what the word is, but it was such a, um, I almost felt like I was leaving my body. And at at the moment, I thought I was transitioning, that I had, you know, that I was leaving the planet. But when I woke up, I realized, I thought, what was that all about? And I heard the voice saying, we're not done yet. And I thought, who's we? And that just got me curious. And so I went to a psychiatrist through therapist to try to figure out what was going on with me that was creating these situations in my life. I didn't know at the time that it was me creating it. Let me, you know, I thought it was everybody else's fault. 
I was in the blank game in the beginning because I didn't know any better. Um, and so, but I started working on myself and figuring out I was the common denominator of my misery. So what is this about? And the love that I felt in that moment made me realize I am love. I am lovable. There was something more bigger than me, some presence. And so I just trusted it. I thought, oh, I feel like this is what's been guiding me all along. I don't know what it is, but I, I you know, religion um, wasn't really part of my upbringing, although I did go to several churches on my own, different religions and things, trying to find a home and never really finding that. Um, just feeling worse than I did before because of all the mistakes I had made, feeling judged for it. So I, I hesitated to call it God, and I really didn't want anything to do with religion again. And so, but I knew it was something, it was God, I knew it deep down, but not the God that I was trained to believe existed. Not some, you know, someone that is judging us. It's not, it's love. It basically is love, which, which is who we are. And so I just trusted it. I didn't understand it. I didn't have the background or any knowledge. And so then I just started reading every book. I I read your book and I saw the books that you read. I thought, yep, read that, yep, read that, yep, read that. Thousands, I'm sure, of books from um, all the authors everyone's really familiar with in this arena. But, um, and slowly just started getting glimpses of what different perspectives. Mm -hmm. So, but in the moment, yeah, so I was just, I just, you know, got to that point where if this is it, I'm out of here. I don't really care where I'm going, but I don't want to be here anymore. And that's a really hard place for people to be. You know, yeah. and, I, and I've coached a lot of people that were very close to that. Well, I'm really curious. I know, like me, uh, for you, discovering the law of attraction was a big turning point in, in your life. How, how did how did it come about? How did it come into your life? <laughs> oh, I have it's a funny story, but I'll um after many years of reading different books, I would go to Barnes and Noble and just, you know, this is back before Amazon was like it is now, but I'd get these big, I'd just stand in line with these big stack of books. Just still looking for answers, still looking for more information, still trying to find my place. And so I'm standing in Barnes and Noble in the longer version of the stories in my book, but um, with another stack of books. And I see this CD pack on the while, while I'm standing in line, they have this little stand, you know, that you're standing next to as you're waiting to be checked out and had all these uh, CDs in it back in the day when we put CDs in our cars <laughs> and um, and I saw this one that said well actually I, let me back up the first time I came across something I was looking for a book I was in Barnes and Noble and I couldn't find what I was looking for so I went over to another whole section it was a mystery section to buy some just some book to read to get my mind off things and I'm standing in this mystery section and there's a book a little tiny book that falls on the floor at my feet. And it was called The Secret. <laughs> and I thought it was a mystery book because of the front of the cover. And I thought, oh, this is a cute little book. I'll just go take it over to the coffee counter and I'll sit, you know, I'll sit, sit at the table and read and see what this is. And oh my God, it was like the curtain was pulled back from the Wizard of Oz. Like, oh my gosh. This is this is what I've been searching for. And it wasn't even in the section that I was looking in. It just fell on the floor because I was trying to pull a different book out. And so I just sat there and read the whole thing. And then I was like so excited. So that started it. But the book for me didn't give me, okay, now what? Like I didn't know what to do next. Mm -hmm. And so I kept looking and then and then I'm standing in Barnes and Noble again and um a uh that the stand was there and I saw this little CD of Abraham Hicks, uh, Law of Attraction. And somebody else had mentioned it to me before and I kind of just like, yeah, well, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. I knew that the secret was about Law of Attraction, but I did, but because of um, the way it was packaged, I thought, oh, I know what it was, the teachings of Abraham. 
That's what it was. And I thought, oh, this is about the Bible. No, just leave it. Because <laughs> I thought it was Abraham in the Bible. Right. And so then, um, so I went and, and I was standing in line and I saw these CDs again. I went, okay, this keeps popping up. I saw this in my friend's house. I saw this here. I saw that there. Let me just read it. And I read the back. I went, oh, this isn't what I thought. So I started listening to the CD for CD in the car as I was going home. And I had to pull off the side of the road in tears because I thought, this is it. This is the piece I've been missing. And that sent me. And luckily, Esther Hicks lives six miles from me. Wow. And at that time, she was having seminars, you know, a couple of times a week here in, in San Antonio. And so um, I started going, you know, listening to her and Jerry. Oh, my gosh. That was it. That, then I got it. And ever since then, I've been on this path and it's been snowball effect, bigger and bigger and bigger and just very exciting. But when you're ready, what you need shows up, the people show up, the information shows up. And this has been part of my journey all along. And all the things that happened in my past that I didn't didn't have a context for finally made sense. Well, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've heard a story of a book falling at somebody's feet. I've had it happen to me a couple. <laughs> and, and you know, the universe doesn't mess around when you're ready for it. And oh, here, read this. And it, it's, it's beautiful. I love that story. But, you know, for me, you and I both uh, coach people and we use the principles of the law of uh, attraction. For you, with your clients and the people you encounter, what's the biggest misconception about the law of attraction that people have? Oh, that's the embodiment part. Mm. They under, it's kind of like understanding the rules of gravity, but not really having a true concept of what it's about. Uh, the embodiment of, how can I say this? What I notice is people say, well, law of attraction, what you focus on, you get. I said, yes, but how you feel tells you how you're focused. You might think you're focused on bringing in more, more abundance, but how do you feel when you think about it? Well, I'm mad because it's not here. I said, well, then you're not in alignment vibrationally with the abundance, even though it is here for you. It's right here. And they don't know how to feel as to trust, to feel as if it's here, to really see the abundance around them, to realize they already are abundance everywhere if they just start paying more attention and be in the present moment. So the embodiment part of being able to feel as if it's true, I think they're missing that part of it. You know, that you have to see it to believe it is, I have a chapter in my book that says, believe it to see it. Mm -hmm. Because we have to have the belief that we are worthy, that what we want is available to us and let go of the how and the when and the where to just be really clear about how you how, what you want, why you want it and how do you want to feel and feel that now, because there are aspects of those feelings already present in your life. I don't know if that answered your question, but. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But, you know, the other thing, too, and I, it took me a while to realize this, too, that we can sit here and say, universe, I want this new dream house and, and all of that. Um, but if your words don't match what your heart is radiating out to, the, and this is quite often the, the case, uh, the, the law of attraction, the universe, here is what your heart is sending out to you. That's your real desire right there. So you can say all that stuff, but if you're not in alignment with, with uh, your deepest uh, inner self, your heart, uh, then, you know, that's where the people get disappointed. It's, oh, there's none of this crap works. You know, I'm not going to do this. And, you know, I've talked to other uh, spiritual teachers and um, the biggest criticism is is for people who don't understand the whole concept of the law of attraction and how it works is, oh, it's just about getting stuff. Mm -mm. Not yeah. at all. Not when you really understand the law of attraction. It It works whether we believe it or not. That's the first thing I share with people is a lot of people say, oh, it doesn't work. I said, well, it is working like gravity works, whether we pay attention to it or believe it or not. But I agree, it's the heart, it's the soul, understanding that what you're projecting out is what you're drawing to you. We are magnets. 
and how we're feeling is what we're how we're attracting. That's what I learned from where I was with wanting to exit planet Earth to now where I hope I stay here another 40, 50 years. Even given everything going on in this world, because I understand what's really going on. And mm-hmm. and so it, it is about how you feel. That's what it's attracting. So if you have doubt, if you have fear, that's what you're attracting, the lack. You can't attract abundance from a place of lack. And it's not about getting things. I've manifested so much crazy stuff, and I share some of it in my book, that now I am I remember Abraham talking about there's going to be sessions in the future about demanifestation <laughs> because you end up with so many things and all of that takes energy to mm-hmm. to maintain to create you know to keep in your life and takes time and now I'm on the de- I'm on the demanifestation and it's probably very annoying for people to hear that but there's so much abundance and it's not doesn't come to us the way that we've been taught mm-hmm. Most people think they have to work hard for it, but what if you don't? And that's what I questioned. I asked this question, well, what if it's not that way? Mm -hmm. Oh, I manifested, one of my stories is about manifesting a private jet ride worth over $150,000 in three days from a stranger I didn't even know. (laughs) And just by intention. And so I share that story so people can see, is this crazy or what? And I won't share how that happened because that is the the stories that I share are about how how did what was the purpose of this this um, situation in my life for me? What was in it for me? It looks like it was horrible, and it was. But what? Who did I become moving through that? And then, so how do you do that? So in my book, I've broken it down. The first parts of story I think you saw, and the second parts something more to explain it and then something for you so how do you apply this in your life what's an easy way to start shifting your mindset and understanding the law of attraction from an experiential level not a mental level well that's cool i'm going to hang out with you so i I can go on private jet rides with you (laughs) i ended up doing it twice (laughs) I don't share the second time in the book, but you know, that first time it was a, it was crazy. That is, so. that, I can't read, uh, wait to read more about it. Now let, let's find out more about your book. Now you recently published a new edition of your book that you wrote called, there's got to be something more. Tell us about that and how it came about writing it and why a new edition. So my first edition was written five years ago when I was married to the love of my life, we'd been together for almost 30 years. And on the day it hit number one, and it was written with the intention of sharing stories and just getting people thinking. Um, And, you know, five years ago, we were in a different world than we are today, totally different world. And so the day that I found out, we were actually on an anniversary trip with some friends when I found out I hit number one. And... I had some book signings planned. I did one, I think is all I got. I think I only finished one. And I had um, all these things in place that I was going to do when I got back from my trip. But instead the universe threw me another wrench into to my plans. And my husband um, got sick and needed a lung transplant and ended up passing away. So uh, for months, you know, that was my life. That's what I was focused on. My book got put to the side. My business got put to the side. And then, of course, you go through the grieving period. And that was a couple of years. And finally, when I was feeling ready to be out in the world again and able to support people again and and help people again, the pandemic hit. I was actually on a cruise with Abraham Hicks March 1st of 2020 and stepped off the ship to everybody locked down and um and so then I thought okay now what I'm by myself I live by myself I'm out here you know with no one around me I don't see anybody what am I going to do with myself how long is this going to last and I kept getting it's going to be a while 
I thought, I know, I'm going to read, I'm going to take these stories and I'm going to dig deeper and give more information and do, do whatever I can to support people because I realized what everybody was going through, the loss of what was, the grieving of what was, the uncertainty of the futures, what I experienced as a widow for the last two years. So I had already gone through that and came out on the other side. It was like another level, another, I don't know what's after caterpillar and butterfly, but whatever's after butterfly, <laughs> that's where I am now. It was that two years or so of being secluded, I realized that I really wanted to help people because I knew they were going to be struggling when they came out of this. Mm -hmm. And so I, I wrote the book. I gave this. And meanwhile, um, before my husband got sick, I was working with Dr. Sue Mortar. I don't know if you're familiar with her, the energy oh, coach. Yeah. So, I, I, so I'm a master trainer in her work. I worked with her for seven years and traveled with her. And so what I did was I took everything I learned from her and I also, um, you know, Bruce Lipton and um, Neil Donald Walsh and several other people that I studied with. I took all that information and I just synthesized it and shared it in as simple a form as I could. I used to be a public school teacher was one of my, you know, that's what I did for several years. So I'm really, I really love taking hard concepts and making them easier to understand and apply. And so that's what I did. I took all this awesome information and all this training that I've gotten, and I just synthesized it down to very um, easy activities for people to start their journey. Because for me, I didn't have that. I read all these books and was really having a hard time um, applying it because of, of the missing piece of understanding the universal laws for one thing. But I wanted it to be something where people could laugh and cry and go, oh, she gets me. Okay, let me try this one thing. Because if they'll just try one activity and really apply themselves to it, it'll change their life. It'll start that change. It'll start that belief. It'll start that experience where they'll be able to feel and understand it's from the heart that we create, not the mind. And I think I saw that there's uh, 21 chapters and you encourage people to do one chapter a week uh, and focus on that uh, as a form of exercise. Right. That's one way to do it. And um, for me, I usually read through the book because that's my style. And then I go back and I'll do do one chapter at a time. Or some people, they just want a little taste and then they'll work with that. And they might put it down for a while. But the nice thing is I set it up so each chapter stands alone. They don't need to read the next chapter. If they just applied the first thing they read, it will help. And so that's why I read the book. Um, and I learned a lot through the grieving process. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, I lost my mom, my best friend, two more friends, and my husband all in three years. Oh, and so I, I grieved a lot. But when my husband passed, that was just, that was, it was different. And it, it totally changed my whole world because we've been together 30 years. Well, well, your book is called There's Got to Be Something More. So what exactly is the something more that you write about? Well, you know, when I was headed for the trees, that's what I kept thinking to myself. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be something more. This can't be what life is like. I have clients that are actually pretty successful and their lives are, you know, they've got the kids, they've got the house, they've got, you know, a successful career. They don't have a lot of drama in their lives, but they're not happy either. Because, you know, as you were mentioning, the law of attraction is not about just getting stuff. It's... What is it that, that what's the void in us that's wanting us to have that stuff? And why is it that there's millionaires and billionaires that are miserable? Right. It's not because I have worked with millionaires and they're miserable too. It's not about the stuff. It's the it's something's missing for us. There's something more that we're craving. And it's not really the stuff. The stuff is fun, believe me. The jet ride was awesome. <laughs> but <laughs> That, that was just me proving to myself 
how do I, how to, how do I draw to me what I want? And that's what I teach people. And uh, it's hard to teach it with a book. Um, but I did what I could to try to get people started on that path. And those that are eager to really dive deep, I'm able to take them pretty quickly into where I, you know, share into my space because I, you know, I, I listened, I think it was to your last podcast. Oh, what was her name? Um, um, I, Jackie, uh, Laura Jones. No, I'm sorry. So it must have been the one before, but she was talking about how, um, oh my gosh, I just lost my train of thought. Well, that's all right. I do that all the time. <laughs> what were we, we were chatting about? Um, well, just about uh, what, what is that something more out there? Yes. So the something more is that we are energy. Everything that exists is energy. And we send out signals. It's like a radio station, mm -hmm, yeah. radio towers. And whatever channel we're on is what we're attracting. And if we can understand how to turn that dial and turn it up and get to that frequency of attraction, because we're always attracting. You know, ironically, we're not just attracting the good stuff. We're attracting the good, bad, and the ugly because we're sending out a signal. So how do you get to that higher vibration? What do you do to get into that space where you're actually a creator and not a reactor? You know, I always say that I'm going to get a T-shirt because if you take the word reactor and you just switch one letter around, you have creator. And we're always either creating or reacting. And I'm human too. I mean, I have my moments when something happens and I react out of my personality, but it's not, we're not our personality. It's just one aspect of us. It's our human aspect. The truth of us is love. And the something more is understanding that we are lo the love we're seeking. And we have everything we need within us. It's not out there. And when we can tap into that and use that to raise our vibration, to raise our frequency so we're on a higher frequency, then those things that we've been wanting just fall into our lap like my free jet ride. Wow, there's some beautiful spiritual ramifications of everything you just said there. And it seems like both you and I coming from beginnings with the law of attraction, we, we've learned to to understand the the uh, that everything is energy, but everything is love too, and and most people don't have a clue about that. And as a matter of fact, there's a couple phrases on your website that that I really really like. One was "love your life now," and the other one was "what if you are the hero you've been looking for?" And I think most people have no clue that there is a hero within them just waiting to be unleashed. Mm -hmm. And it all comes back to mindset because in every situation, we get to be the victim or the hero. It's really our choice, but how do you make that choice? Because it feels like things are happening to us. And if we can just make a small shift and go, how could it be happening for us? We may not know in the moment, but down the road, we will see. I thought when my husband passed that that was the end, like what's, you know, like, how am I ever going to be happy again? It was such a hard thing to go through mm -hmm. and really on my own. And I didn't have the support of anyone through this. I was really on my own, not the people I thought I should get support from. Let me back up. Complete strangers showed up for different reasons and supported me in ways that actually the people I already knew couldn't have. And so it all worked out beautifully, but now I'm remarried. I just got married in November. Okay. And <laughs> thank, you. thank you. And he lost his wife. Now we didn't meet till three years after our spouses passed, but he lost his wife just a few days before I lost mine. He wasn't even living in this state. Hmm. But, so we both know, like we have a love that we couldn't have had without the loss that we had because he was married 20 some years too. So with that loss comes in a different level of appreciation of what love is and all the little stuff 
that most couples or partners um, think is a issue is nothing. And so I couldn't believe that I would find someone at this point in my life, because I'm 66 years old, that would be like the love of my life again. And so there, um, but I did the work on myself. I allowed myself to grieve. I had what I was having. I didn't try to tell myself I shouldn't be. If I understood law of attraction, if I understood there is no death and all these things, and I shouldn't feel this way. I never should on myself. Mm -hmm. I try my best not to, because that's shame. And that's not true. We're human beings having a human experience and emotions are telling us where we are and how far we are from what we want. That's all they are is energy in motion. And so if we allow ourselves to feel it, it comes out. If we stuff it, we make ourselves sick. And so I just allowed myself to grieve. I didn't let anyone else tell me how long or how I should or shouldn't do anything. And in the end, I'm happier now, Carl, than I have been in my entire life. <laughs> as you should be, as you should be. That is awesome. You know, I really uh, appreciated you giving an example earlier that it, it takes uh, a while to shift energetically to to what you really want to attract into your life. I think the movie, The Secret, made a, a real uh, big point of that in, in saying that it takes a while since energy takes a while to change. If you've been resonating for 30, 40 years in a negative place, it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, I use, um, with my clients, the example in, in uh, this of uh, the old fashioned radio dial, the old radio, they had big knobs on them. And if you were at seven, uh, 87.9 FM and you wanted to be at 107.9 FM, you had to take that big knob and keep turning it and turning and changing the frequency and turn it and turn it. And then even when you hit 107.9, you had to fine tune it. Exactly. Great example that it takes time to change it. But once you tune into that frequency, there you can hear that channel loud and clear. You remember how we used to push those buttons in and lock it in? Yeah. Once you get that to right in that sweet spot, you lock it in, you're not going to go back. Right. That's the great thing. It's like once you get there, you're at a new set point. You're at a new understanding and you won't go back and you won't repeat it as long as you don't keep telling your old stories from the victim's perspective. That's the other part of this. Like, yes, all these things happened to me and it took me a while because I kept thinking I was being punished because that's what I was always taught. Oh, bad things are happening because you don't deserve good. That's not true. And so what I realized was that it's about focusing in the present moment, in this moment right now. Now, if I'm looking at something negative that happened to me in the past, what did I learn from it? Who has it made me? Because I'm much stronger having gone through that. And rather than in telling the story from the, vic from the victor, from the hero's story, not the victim's story. And when we label ourselves as a widow, I wouldn't let anybody call me that. Because just the word has a resonance and it's not a good feeling one. And when people use it, everyone was feeling sorry for me and and really didn't want to be around me because they don't like to think about the fact that they could be one too. That was the interesting thing. But I don't like the labels because labels keep us in a box yeah. and it can keep us as a victim. And even saying survivor almost limits you. There's little levels that over time, if we didn't have labels, we wouldn't have wars. <laughs> you know, if we weren't trying to label everybody and put them in a certain category of right and wrong, good or bad, um, we wouldn't have a lot of the tr trauma that we have going on in our world right now, but that's a whole other topic. But I just learned that being in the present moment and being clear about what you want. And in this moment right now, what can we do to be happy? Love your life right now, the way it is. W gratitude is the most important part of all that. Wow, there, there is a lot of beautiful wisdom in, in uh, what you said just over the last few moments here, and thank you for that. And one of my favorite lines is, uh, live the life you love and love the life you live. And, and I think that is a worthy, worthy goal. But we are speaking with Kat Wells. She is a mindset coach, an amazing story, a best-selling author. 
I encourage you to check out her book. There's got to be something more. And, you know, I just want to go back for a moment. I, I know you've uh, met um, uh, Esther Hicks, who channels Abraham. You were on a cruise. Did you get to sit in the hot seat? You know, in the very beginning, I wanted to, but then I realized something that no matter what my question was, it always got answered. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know, and I know that a lot of the people I talked to that sat in the hot seat, they don't remember anything that was said because they were so nervous being up there on the stage that they remembered very little. And of course, usually they could listen back to a recording. But I thought, you know, and one time they pointed right at me and another lady popped up and they I remember she walked, started toward the aisle and Esther Abraham was looking right at me <laughs> and kind of pointing at me and she just kept coming and I just let it go. But my questions always get answered. And that's the thing. It's our ego that kind of wants to be up on stage and, and get to ask the question. But if we realize there's only one of us here and that's another whole topic and that Whatever we want to understand will be answered if we don't get attached again to who, when, where, and how. Just what do you want? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's interesting how <clears throat> eventually your answers get, uh, your your questions got answered. And I have interviewed over the 100 plus episodes I've done, uh, ascended masters channeled through, through people, uh, through uh, trans channels and galactic beings. And I have had, well, well, I should step back for a moment. I have my list of questions and many times they answer those questions before I ask them. But I've had some of my listeners um, message me and say, oh my God, I felt like he was talking right to me. You know, I remember one Othello the Syrian being channeled through Christina Hill, who has done a show with uh, Christy Whitman and the council uh, addressing, said, well, somebody, Connecticut and, and one of my listeners it was they were they know they're talking to that person so yes if you pay attention uh, without even asking your your questions will be answered mm -hmm. it's amazing so it's given, it's given as Abraham book title uh, yeah right. so at this point in your career Kat do you enjoy still working one-on-one -on -one with clients or you're more focused on doing live and virtual workshops or all of the above I enjoy all of it. I still love working one-on-one -on -one with people. Um, I love I love hearing where they started and where they end up in a you know six weeks or seven weeks. Their whole life has shifted, which took me decades. <laughs> so yeah. it's so exciting to see that. And um, I'm just a born teacher. So in any format that I can share, whether it's in groups or one-on-one -on -one or on podcasts or webinars or whatever it is. I just enjoy sharing and helping people with just little, all they need most of the time is just a tweak in their mindset, the tweak of how they're looking, their perspective and realizing it wasn't even theirs probably to begin with. Most of us, our perspective was developed before we were six years old. And so unless we understand that and understand how that affects what we believe today, we don't even know where to begin in changing that. So, um, but yes, I enjoy working with people one-on-one -on -one still. I'll probably always will do that. See, you just answered my next question. I was, I was gonna ask, uh, what's the best advice you can give to somebody who's ready to turn their life around and find that something more, that's something better. And you just said it, it takes a little tweak of their mindset and that's mm -hmm. it, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just starts there and then it slowly gets momentum and pretty soon you start realizing, wait a second, that's not even my belief. And sometimes you'll know right away where it came from. And other times you won't, but you'll know it wasn't yours. Mm. And then you go, okay, so what do I believe? You get to choose. You're the writer of your story. Absolutely. Yeah, that is, that's another favorite my, line of mine. If you get to your very last day on your, on your, uh, on your bed and you're about to take your last breath and you look back and said, who's in charge of your life? Oh yeah, it was me. Nobody else. Right. The right. writer director of your own life definitely something to contemplate uh what's the best way to uh, for people to connect with you and what's your website okay so first for the book it's really easy you can you can get to my website through this as well just somethingmorebook.com um my website is catwellsmindsetmentor.com 
That's why something more books a little easier. It'll take you right to the book page. And I wanted to let everyone know that there's also, um, if you go to the somethingmorebook.com page, there is a um, free companion workbook, mm. 40, 42 pages, I think, that go along with the book. And the way that I created it, it actually stands alone if they just wanted to get a glimpse of, of that but I would suggest reading the stories because that's where, you know, we were talking about embodiment. And when you can read a story and have those emotions come up for you, and then you do the activity, you get so much more out of it than just, oh, there's your kitty. than just, um, you know, doing a workbook by itself. But they can, they're, they're welcome to go to that page and download the workbook. Um, and then my book will be, the ebook's 99 cents for a little while longer but that'll be changing in a couple of weeks, so. Well, this, this has just been a, a beautiful conversation to uh, to chat with you, Kat Wells, thank you. Thank you for your beautiful advice and, and inspiration and and congratulations on, on being the happiest you've ever been in your life at this point. That's awesome. Yes, well, thank you, Carl, for having me. It's been great fun catching up with you. This has been another episode of World Awakenings, the fast track to enlightenment with host Carl Gruber, a certified law of attraction life coach. We welcome you to tune in to each and every episode of World Awakenings as we open your mind, your heart, and your eyes to the fact that the world's population is now more than ever awakening to the truth of all things spiritual, metaphysical, and enlightening, and just how much they play an all-important role in our moment-to-moment -moment daily life. Much love and light to you, my friend, and thank you for tuning in to World Awakenings. Mm -hmm.